minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. You are now tapped into the coolest reptile podcast in the world. Welcome to episode 387. I'm your boy, MJ. What is good, everybody? Hope everyone has having a great week. Uh, if this is your first time tapping in and you're into reptiles, either keeping, admiring, or breeding, do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Smash that like button first and foremost and hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Select all. You'll be on top of every single podcast I drop here on this channel. You can also catch Trap Talk Reptile Podcast on all the uh, major audio platforms such as Spotify, um, Buzzsprout, Apple Podcast. So don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe uh, wherever you listen to Trap Talk Reptile Podcast. Thank you for all the love and support. I got to say, uh, really means a lot. All the ongoing uh, just feedback and support I get from everyone out there. I do want to say, if you're looking for exclusive content, if you want to support what I do further than just watching, or if you just want to tap in with an amazing community, do yourself a favor as well. Go down to the very first link you see in that description below. Click on it and join the Trap Talk Patreon family. Connect with over 170 trappers in the Discord as soon as you join. And then also a lot of great activity stuff on Instagram. Shout out to my uh, Trap Talk IG group fam. You guys are amazing. Always nonstop action going on. And uh, seriously, man, I love, I love everyone growing in this industry, but I love seeing my closest people grow. And we're all day by day getting there, man. So thank you so much. Patreon family, I love you guys. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well, Trap Talk God 619 if you want to see what I have going on with my projects. Hop over to my other YouTube channel, okay, the Trap Vlogs. If you type in the Trap Vlogs, uh, go set your reminder for tomorrow's uh, premiere, episode 90. Um, I get some amazing new uh, additions to the Trap, all right? As you can see, it's some designers, but uh, be ready for that, man. And I thank you to anyone who watches that channel because that channel is very important to me that's where i show all my hard work um because as everyone knows i'm a animal keeper admire before i'm a podcaster you know what i mean i like to show my work what's happening here before i you know people know i just talk all the time because i do talk a lot so uh but man early birds i see you guys what's good if you're in the live chats tonight get the super chats up don't be sharp with the super chats especially if you have a question an important topic something that you feel like we're missing maybe throw a super chat in there and we'll prioritize that and put it on the big screen and we'll get it going okay uh but shout out to all the people in the early birds i'll get to you guys right now i do want to say that uh tonight's episode is brought to you by uh focus cube habitats number one enclosure company in the game if you look behind me everything is focus cube habitats okay uh pvc built they got their own thing going on that's for a fucking fact flex in texas all day every day thank you Stephen and ashley appreciate your love and support if you got eggs put them inside of a sim box Less steps, less stress. If it's a sim, it's a win. All right. I got tree monitor eggs inside of a sim container and hatched many other species of reptiles out of sim containers. Thank you, John and Alex. Appreciate you so much. Also, if you're into monitors and you want to learn more about monitors and you want to make sure that you are learning by some of the best doing it in the monitor game, that's sim container. Okay. They're my mentors when it comes to the monitors for sure. So shout out to my two boys, Alex and John. And then last but not least, Freedom Breeder. Shout out to Freedom Breeder. Number one stainless steel rack company in the game. All right? Especially if you got them stainless steel shelves. <laughs> wow. It hit different. I'm telling you right now when you got those shelves. Super crucial. Jesse, thank you so much for the uh, three plus years of supporting the trap. You're amazing. The entire Freedom Breeder crew. Number one of the game since the 90s. All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, David Levinson. Oh, my God. He's here. Here he is. My guy. Caught him off guard. He has no idea. What is he doing right now? What is happening? I was oh. checking my headspace. I don't want to be too close to the top. I don't want to miss anything. I got to, like, you know, get it right. There's there perfect. He, perfect. There he is. How was uh, how was the road trip in last week? Um, nothing bad happened, so it was a good road trip. 19 hours one way or together? How many hours? I'm sorry. 19 hours there, 19 hours back. And um, the purpose of that was what? Salt Lake City Repticon, or Reptilian Nation. Whoa, okay. And how'd that go? 
Oh, it went pretty good. Um, it's a unique crowd of people, and there's only one show that's been in that town for like 20 years. So now there's two, and he's getting really good traffic, so I'm enjoying it. Now, sales was that anything to talk about, or you know, how, how was that as far as that? You know, uh, sales felt good. Um, a lot more pet sales. Uh, like I said, pet sales been kind of down. That like 300 range animals been kind of a slow move. Okay. Um, but no, I sold a lot of pies, a lot of this, a lot of that. Pogo sales are pretty good overall. I was happy with the show. And um, as soon as I get done with this, I'm jumping in the car and I'm going to Atlanta this weekend for the Reptilian Nation down there. Damn, epic, epic. Uh, uh, you know Marshall Mendez? Oh yeah, of course. What a guy. And here he is with us. What's tonight. up? <laughs> What's up, fellas? How are you doing, buddy? Doing great. Hey, uh, Dave Levison, Marshall Mendez. You guys have you guys met yeah. in person or only know of yeah. each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've met a couple times at shows at Tinley. Oh, Ar Arlington. Didn't you go to Arlington one time too, uh, Marshall? You did. You went to one Arlington. Yes. That yeah, was one Arlington. Last, last year. The last, right? the last one. Well, the earlier this year, I think, right? February or something. Yeah. Uh, Dave, I told Marshall that you're pretty geeked out about the Amazon Trebo episode tonight. Uh, true yeah, or false? Very true, buddy. Very true. Yeah. Um, nice. Well, you know, I'll be straight. I don't want to monopolize this time, but, you know, one of the first things I bought when I decided to be a breeder was um, some baby Amazons that were born at my local pet store. And every year when they'd have more babies, I'd always buy more. And then I sold them. Um, so ever since I've wanted to get back into them, but... I've been kind of looking on the outside in. I don't know when I'm going to make a move, but at some point I just want, I want to wall them, man. And I've always yeah. wanted them since, yeah, since ever, man. It's one of my, one of my favorite arboreals. They're cool. They're, they're cool snakes, you know, super, uh, super active, um, you know, which is the opposite of the other kind of, kind of the other arboreal stuff is way more uh, sedentary. It doesn't move around as much, but man, the Amazons, you give them, you know, some, uh, hiding spots and different branches and there you just see you know they're just all over the place my camera. yeah i mean there was a reason why i was avoiding you know really kind of diving deep on amazon tree bows because i knew what was going to happen i was going to want to go ahead and be like well where can i put these you know what i mean they're addicting i love them and uh now it is what it is it's going to go down um just like this podcast is going to go down uh, i want to say shout out to again everyone in the chats but i want to get this podcast started uh, we have Dayton on the other end. What do you what do you know about HD arboreals, Dave? Have you ever tapped into Dayton's work at all, or, or know of Dayton? Um, if I stalked his work, I just didn't put a name on it. I remember the animals, um, but I'm going to go look at his work after this podcast. I guarantee I've seen some stuff he's done. I think you're well known of stalking people without even knowing their name. I think yeah. I think that's a fact. Uh, kind of my thing, buddy. Kind of my thing. Well, I got to tell you, I first heard about Dayton through Marshall because I asked Marshall. Actually, no, I take that back. Marshall was on my bumper about not having any any Amazon tree boa episodes. And then I, when I asked him, who do I go to? Um, you said Rory, Dayton, and, and I think Rory and Dayton were the two guys you told me to. Those were the two ones. And, and we, ha we have Dayton, and I cannot wait to talk to him. And I uh, hope you guys are ready out there. Are you guys ready to rock and roll? I know I am. <laughs> I'm ready. Russell, ready. Oh yeah, ready? I'm ready, man. All right, guys. <laughs> do what you got. Do what you got. Fuck, Dave. Do what you got to do to stay <laughs> hydrated. Do what you got to do to get your mind right. Episode 387 with Dayton of HD Arboreals coming at you right now. Let's go. Yes. You ready for do, do more in the future? Trap yes. talk podcasts. Yes. Man, only, only trap talk exclusive. Yes. Exclusive. <laughs> oh. So stop calling us. From the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up. With
And we're live, episode 387 with Dayton. What's up, Dayton? Hey, how's it going? Good, man. How are you? Dayton, how you doing, man? Doing pretty good. Had a busy couple weeks, but yeah. Yeah, good to have you here. Like I said, I'm excited. I've not had, you know, a relevant Amazon tree boa breeder on this show. And uh, like I said, Marshall mentioned mentioned you. And I'm curious, Marshall, I mean, have, have you and Dayton had conversations as far as stuff that he's done to help you or like how, how close are you guys? So, you know, kind of just go, go from that. Yeah. Uh, we've never met in person. I don't think, but, uh, I've, I've bought a snake or two from him and he, um, yeah, uh, he's helped me out a bunch with, you know, kind of learning the uh, genetics and stuff like that. So yeah, it's good to finally meet you. Yeah. Uh, I knew of you previously just, like online presence like before we did business together but that was mainly because of uh green tree pythons right yeah and i i used to have a few of those okay nice yeah now yeah, i got a, a a leopard uh leopard male uh i guess maybe about a year ago or so uh so, and uh yeah he's been doing great he si looks like he's gonna sire a a litter this year so pretty psyched about that that's exciting. I, I saw yeah. some pictures on on Instagram about that. So, yeah, I might actually crossed. have a couple litters. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I might actually have a couple litters from some of his siblings. So, oh, sweet. Don't worry about MJ being gone, guys. We'll be just fine. You just carry on the way you are. <laughs> I'm, I don't worry. I can hear. You. I'm fixing my camera. It's out of focus. But no, I mean, I'm I'm listening and, and I'm here. So, but Dane, I got to ask you, like the foundation for you mainly is the Amazon tree boas or can we kind of talk about how important the Amazon tree boa projects are to you? Yeah, that's almost exclusively what I keep. That's all that I breed. Um, I do have some boa constrictors that I've been raising up that I might get around to breeding this year. Um, but yeah, I, I got started in Amazon tree boas and that's all I do basically. Okay. Um, what's the breeding community like in the United States for um, Amazon tree boas? Because I follow one of the European groups, and it seems like there's a lot going on in that. But the groups I'm in stateside, it seems like it's a lot less. Huh. Um, I, I, I only really have experience dealing with people in the States. Um, I've tried a few times to do business out of the country. That usually uh, ends pretty badly like uh, complications with paperwork uh, or with like third party exporters. Um, I've also had some animals imported. I actually had some Amazon tree boas imported from Europe. Um, and that was a very long process and, and things went bad. And yeah. ultimately I guess, you know, I got some animals and, and uh, you know, I've, I've reproduced from those bloodlines. So it's kind of a win, but it, it was way more of a hassle than I would probably try to do again. What did you bring over from, from, from Europe or wherever or somewhere in Europe you said? Yeah, there was a guy um, maybe in like Croatia. Um, I, I can't remember how long ago it was. It, it was a while ago. He no longer has his collection, um, but he was working with uh, a line of Amazon tree boas that he was calling marbles. Okay. And they looked like a really heavy patterned calico um, and kind of funky. And uh, I had a buddy who, who is able to uh, import export um, like himself. And he asked me if uh, there was anything I'd be interested in getting um, because he was going to be receiving a shipment from Europe. And I mentioned that to him and he decided to uh, go 50, 50 with me on like a whole group of them. And so okay. uh, the initial plan was to buy an entire litter uh, uh, of marbles and have them imported. Um, and <laughs> I, I got, so, I got some, I got some marbles, but uh it, it wasn't the original deal. So. Okay. Damn. Sounds like a whole, the whole situation sounds pretty. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, we uh, he had just like had a litter born, and I was like, okay, we'll buy them all. We'll take that whole litter. Um, and then uh, while we were waiting for him to get uh, to a certain show in Europe, you know, it, it took like a couple months, and we had to do paperwork and stuff like that. And um, he he said he lost like half the litter, uh, basically like some kind of uh, equipment malfunction or something. Hmm. And so he offered to replace that by giving us an adult, uh, an adult, or basically an adult male uh, visual. And uh, so we accepted. Um, and then when we did finally get the animals here, uh, we probed that adult male and it was a female. Um, and it wasn't really an adult because it was a female. And. Uh, yeah, so so we had to raise that up for a few years before it could reproduce. So there, is that babies, a recessive gene or or he, is he it a recessive it a re marble? He thought at the time that it was a recessive gene, um, but he had done what he thought was marble to marble and and didn't get a full litter, so we kind of were skeptical mm. of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we basically just wanted to get it over here because we thought it was cool and we knew that, you know, we could figure it out eventually. <clears throat> How hard are they to import or export? What are they like appendix one or two? Or are they pretty, are they pretty easy? Like, are they like a ball python um, or? or... I, I have no experience with anything else. So I, I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think they're like uh, protected or anything like that. Okay. I mean, they're still coming out of the wild pretty regularly every year, as you guys know. So at least from yeah. there, it's pretty easy. But yeah, from another country, and I'd have to double check. Um, I got Warren Booth messaging me in the background. I think he mentioned that Nick Mutton helped you get those in the country. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, all right, well, here's the thing. I definitely want to talk a lot about Morse, but I think we're skipping a little ahead because I definitely want to hear the breakdown of genetics. Is there okay. anything that, like, a new keeper needs to know about these guys? Like... Any weird stuff? Because, you know, a lot of the arboreal things seem to have some stuff going on, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I think they're pretty easy to keep. But I do think um, maybe in certain areas that they're actually a bit more of a pain than some of the other arboreals, like, like chondros or uh, emeralds. Okay. Um, that being their metabolism. Um, so you, you clean, like you clean their cage pretty frequently, you know, you feed them and they're, they're defecating and stuff like that pretty much right okay. away. Like, yeah. After like a day or like, you know, two days or something. Yeah. Which is, a yeah. which is a typical for a boa species, right? I mean, it's a right. boa, take a long time to digest. Yeah. But these aren't taking a long time. You said it's going fast. Two days for a full digestion. Did I catch that right? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if that's like they're digesting that meal or they're passing the, the previous meal or whatever, but it, it only takes a couple of days after you feed them for them to be. Yeah. Uh, and they, so. they poop a lot, a lot yeah. more than a lot more frequent than a, a, a chondro or an emerald. Okay. Okay. Well, also, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, I also think like they don't make as good of a display snake as like emeralds or uh, chondros because they do spend a good deal of their time like on the ground or hiding. Mm -hmm. um, if you, if you provide them with that, it's about 50, 50 mix. Interesting. Um, you, would say, you would say, sorry, Dave, you would say they look more of a, like they would look more of an emerald or chondro at nighttime and un without any kind of exposure, like on them. Right. That's kind of, would you say like they're very active at night? That's kind of when they're out roaming around. They're more, they're more cruising than perched and, and waiting. Okay. From my experience, so so oh, they're shit. cruising around the cage. Got it. Okay. Go ahead, Dave. Sorry. Oh no, fine. Um, so with your feeding schedule, then are you guys both just doing it weekly, or with them defecating as much as they are, you guys feeding them like colubrids on like a four to five day schedule? You want? I'm personally doing once a week. Them? Yeah, I'm doing okay. once a week. N nothing in this. Nothing in here gets fed more than once a week. Usually, M maybe baby, you know, little tiny ball pythons, or you know, uh, that's about it. I try to, you know, try to do everything. I'm on like I got a little routine, so it's it's once a week, no matter what it is for me. Uh, I I I got a, I guess a couple different, and I don't really have like a, a set schedule. But um, 
with the with like the neonates and young ones, I I do try to, I'll I'll do it even uh, you know like four or five days. It's probably what I try to keep them eating at. Um, and my adults, it's a little different. Um, like my adult males, I kind of just uh, once they get to a certain size, like I don't uh, continue to like increase their their food size or anything like that. So they'll eat about a, a jumbo mouse, and that's as big as I'll give them. Um, with, with the females, I kind of do a, a seasonal thing where, uh, if I'm not really pairing them up, I'm, I'm not feeding them as often. So they may go, you know, a few weeks or a month. Um, but when I, uh, want to like ramp things up, if I think like a female, uh, is a coming of age and size, I'll, I'll kind of feed her more frequently and larger meals right before I start to pair her up and, and like continue through the breeding. Okay. So MJ, you want to like tag team this like question for question right now? What, what, what's your vibe feeling like tonight? Oh, go ahead, man. Just, just keep doing your, you got keep more. Rolling? Okay. Keep rolling. Um, okay. So um, dietary stuff, let's say leading into a breeding season, um, you know, are you doing anything different with dieting? Like, you know, what's the, um, what's the time they're spending together? Is there rotations? Like a little bit of like the early season breakdown of at least the introduction of them and how far a male can go in the breeding season. Okay. Um, so first of all, I kind of don't really have a season. Um, I'll, I'll pair up year round if, if I think um, a pair is um, ready or, you know, mature. Uh, I do have a better luck when we when we have more rainy seasons like fall and uh springtime so where do you I live will... what part of the country are you in yeah i was gonna ask that northwest Portland, okay Oregon. okay oh cool nice yeah. oh so, so um, you're getting yeah, rain, rain, rain often then <laughs> yeah yeah cool we get rain off we don't have like storms though you know so like yeah right it's just overcast and like yeah know. Yeah, it's just overcast and kind of weak rain, you know, a lot. That does something, though. I'm sure it does. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Go on, Marshall. Okay. Where's, um, mom? Nah. Where's mom? Can you go? I'm just going to say that's where uh, Randall lives, too, from Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah, he's from Washington. Yep, he's in Washington. Yeah, or that, I mean, that, that area. Yeah. yeah, I know Randy. I, I see him in person, and, and uh, he's the one who kind of uh, got this thing. So, yeah, shout, shout out to Randy P, man. He helped me delegate this and get me in touch with uh, Dayton here. Because Dayton, I was sitting in your like request messages box for like two days, and I know Instagram can be tricky, and it's hard to like click certain little departments to see where you're getting messages at. Um, but yeah, I'm glad we got connected. I'm also just horrible with technology, <laughs> and, and I'm not, I'm not like super hip with all the social media stuff. Yeah, Dave, Le Dave Levison, man, me him, same way, same way. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's better things to do. Yes, oh. I like it that way. <laughs> it's good to have some separation, you know, yeah. be able to disconnect from stuff. Totally. Um. Well. Um. Okay. So here's a question. So you're talking about year-round cycling in a sense. Um. Now, mm -hmm. are you doing it to where um? when you figure out what an animal schedule is, are you finding it's true to that schedule moving forward after the first litter? Like if they drop in November, you know, they're typically going to drop in November or you got these things running on like a 14 or 18 month schedule in between litters. Hmm. Oh, uh, I, I might've missed a little bit of that. I'll, I'll try. Oh. To... Okay. How about this? So you pair year round, um, yeah. you know, once you figure out when that female is cycling, do you then plan your cycles around when she previously had her litter, or do you still treat her as a year round? Um, I, I guess the the main thing I I, I wait is at, is at least like a year after having like delivered babies before I try to like introduce a male to them again. Okay. Um, but year round, if if they're like up to a good weight, they're up to a mature age. Um, I will, and, and usually I'll, I'll give them that heavy feeding before introduction. And, and then I'll, I'll make an introduction and see uh, if the pair is kind of compatible because mm. I've kind of noticed that sometimes you just 
don't have compatible pairs. Uh, you know, like hmm. I will have certain males that won't breed a female um, that are proven males or that, or they'll go on to then, you know, copulate with another female and, and vice versa where a female might reject a male and then, I introduce a, a separate male and, and that male will be accepted. Um, but yeah, I, I do have better results um, when, when it's rainy season, uh, you know, middle of summer, middle of, or, you know, middle of winter. I, I don't have typically great results um, pairing stuff up, but the, it still does happen sometimes. Marshall, aren't you doing like a, Two to one ratio, or something like two males and one female, or something like that. When, when it comes to pairing, or is it just always one and one? No, nah, it's always just been one and one for me. I'm not, I mean, I've only had three litters, so I've been, essentially until I got this uh, leopard male, uh, I had I had one red uh, calico male, and I would just cohab him. I'd switch him from one, like you know, had him with one female, um, and once she got you know, ovulated, I'd pull him and put him with the other one until she ovulated, then put him back with the other one. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's all, that's what I've done for the three, three litters that I've had. Same, same with you, Dane's always been one and one. Like every, each time you pair. I think one to one is a good ratio. Um, I do prefer just like kind of what Marshall was saying. Like I like to introduce a pair and then leave them together until the females ovulated. Um, I do separate for like feedings and stuff like that. Or if the male uh, starts to show like a lack of interest, I'll pull him for a little bit and then reintroduce him. What's the longest you've ever had a male stay with the female for? Um, I would say that actually probably happened this year and I've had it uh, a few times. Um, typically, like I'll introduce a male, you'll start to see the female swell a little bit af mm -hmm. after some copulations. Yeah. I don't know, maybe, maybe a month or so. And then the follicles will sort of develop for about a month or so before you get the ovulation. Um, but I had very noticeable follicle development this season or this year um, for multiple months. Um, and I was even like, did she ovulate? Was that an ovulation? Mm. Uh, you know, I was playing the guessing game um, until these females did finally uh, ovulate. But I think I started noticing fall. Like, for example, I think I started noticing some follicle development in March and that female ovulated in uh, June or July. Uh -oh. For a few that's months. kind of new for me i i haven't um, really experienced that before no, that was with the female who's laid for you before right um it's a new girl is this the first time no it, it was she, she's a virgin yeah it's, it's oh. her first time so maybe it just took a while for it to like figure like kick in right because so and, and i'm curious because you said june around june and how much other stuff was going around for you around that time a lot i i um yeah, a, a lot. I, I've probably got like, uh, I, I don't know. I, I've got like maybe four gravid females right now, but I've got like three others that have been breeding on and off. So, wow, that's sick. Okay. And in the, in the wild, their cycle is they're usually having their babies. Is it like August, September, or when is it in the wild? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll ask Warren for us. Not everybody, okay, yeah. not, everybody has that, yeah. not everybody has that data ready to go, Dave. Come on. Man. I guess I, I, I don't know, man. I was just, I wanted it. Um, oh, yeah. How about this um, population, buddy? Oh, go ahead. Can I just say something? It just, it would just remind me of an episode one time where I had somebody on, and I'm not going to say God bless her, but, but I had somebody <laughs> on the episode and she kept talking about like how she was going to the wild to see these things. And then, um, I, you know, I just asked her a question like, what's the temperature? And you're like, what's the ambient or the temperature in, in your room? And she's like, whatever it is in the wild. And I was like, do you have that number? She's like, do you have that number? She was like, whatever it is right now in the wild, that's what it is. And I'm like, fair enough. I'll leave it alone. Anyways, like that, that's what that just reminded me of right now. So anyways, continue. Um, okay. So um, uh, yeah, I, I, 
Oh, I'm right, fucking. Mark. I don't even know what's going on anymore. I'm just going to sit back. Let's uh, get let's get through this, and then we'll go to the next question. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I read one of uh, Bob Henderson's books, who actually you know studies like the whole genus of Corallus in the wild. Um, but it's a very scientific book, and it's it's pretty um, dull reading, and and like you know just telling you the data and stuff like that. So I mean, I haven't really. Uh, used it for my my captive husband husbandry much okay um have you guys noticed with locking are they um are they up or are they down when they're doing locks mm. like do you find them in the hide box locking or are they out and about uh, uh for me it's out and about okay. I, I i get both on the ground or uh you know per perched up okay you usually uh it can be like on the ground when the female is less receptive, but the male is persistent. Okay. Right. And, and with you Dayton, as far as like, you know, not that it's routine, but how many locks on an average are you seeing from your males to before the ovulation goes? Like, are you seeing multiple like daily locks or is it just kind of like it, they, he does this thing and then it just builds up to the ovulation. It usually it usually goes in uh, spurts where like you'll you'll get daily locks for a few days, um, and then there'll be you know maybe a week or so uh, of nothing, um, and that's usually when I'll I'll pull the male you know feed the female, um, give it a few days and then reintroduce and then typically y you'll see the locks resume again for a couple days. And are you food cycling? Like, do you kind of bump that meal? Is that a bigger meal than typical when, when that meal happens after that first lock? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, I, I mean, it's, it's bigger than typical. Uh, e even like before, like before the introduction, like I'll, I'll give them, you know, larger meals um, more frequently. <clears throat> um, well, how about this? Um, do you guys um, count out post ovulation shed until um, they have their babies? Um, do you do at ovulation? What's the science on that? Hmm. I go uh, post ovulation shed, and that's pretty typical. Um, but I, I'm kind of uh, learning that you know maybe maybe we should be keeping track of you know from ovulation as well, but. Ovulation can be harder to catch sometimes, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree for sure. Yeah, especially on a snake like, snake like that. I, mean, I was going to ask you, like, they don't probably have huge football ovulations, do they? Mm, they I've get, seen them, some pretty big ones. Yeah. Yeah, they. they I mean, it's it's noticeable. Um, yeah. But it's not you get you get you get scale separation and um, yeah, it's 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 pretty. I mean, they, they swell up big. Okay, so how many days are we talking post ovulation shed? I I average between about 120 and 130 uh, days post ovulation uh, shed, um, but there there's a bigger range than that. You know, like I think it's been down to like maybe 105, 110 days, all the way up to 180 something days. Okay. Do you think that has anything to do with the range when they're pulled out of the wild? Maybe you're getting some from this side and that side of the forest? I think predominantly uh, that has to do with the uh, basking temps that they're able to get. Or, or like the duration of time that they're able to bask. Okay. So one female that had babies at 125 days next year could be 110? Or do you find that female is always 125-ish? I find most of my females are between 120 and 130 days. Yep. Nice. Now, I, I, gotta, I, have the, I have all the data, but I, I can't I, – I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. <laughs> That's fine. Nice. What do you prefer, Dayton? Are you more of like, you know, favorite towards feeding your Amazon tree bow as mice, or do you like to do rats? I'm just curious. Okay. <laughs> um, so I guess uh, it's both. I, I actually um, started, uh, I started with just doing mice, basically. <laughs> um, and then 
uh, as I got to like no other breeders, not necessarily of Amazons, but, um, you know, other people who work with reptiles. And um, I kept some of uh, I kept some other species. I started to incorporate rats into that, um, mostly with adult females. Um, but yeah, I almost always feed mice to my neonates. Like I'll start out with uh, fuzzy mice. And uh, that's what I typically start out with feeding my neonates. And then they just kind of get inappropriately sized mouse until you know, they're a larger female that needs um, a rat. I also just like, I don't know if there's anything to back it up, but, uh, you know, like I think a, a, a weanling rat or a small uh, juvenile rat might have more fat content than like uh, an adult, uh, old, retired mouse. Um, and, and so I think that might help uh, females a bit. Uh, Go, going with a rat versus a retired mouse, just you're saying, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, I would always do your uh, girls? Forward. Oh, go ahead. I, I was just going to ask: Do your girls eat when they're gravid? Yeah, uh, typically they'll eat for a period of time, um, and then they'll start to reject the food. Um, so that kind of that kind of correlates with uh, basking in, I think, um, a little bit where um, when they're to the point where they're really like seeking out the basking, they're they're not really interested in eating. And once my female rejects a feeding when she's gravid, I, I stop feeding her. I, I just don't try anymore. OK. Go ahead, Dave. I'm so scared to talk anymore. Um... <laughs> well, um, how about this? I want to get to some fun stuff. Um, how about this? Before we jump off this, any warnings for anybody? Anything like, hey, be ready for this to happen when you're breeding? Like anything that's common in the species? Or is this like a good species that almost anyone can jump into? Um, I, I don't think – I mean, I, I think it takes a, a certain uh, – mindset you know like i i don't necessarily think it's a good uh beginner snake and, and i don't think it's a good um like pet snake uh, i th i think you know it, it's kind of more like a piece of art and uh you know if you're like if you like to walk into your snake room and just browse your uh snakes you know like they, they make a an awesome display especially at nighttime when you walk into your room and check them out uh you guys want to talk yeah, they're, about they're kind of like an intermediate step between uh, like a, you know, corn snake and a, and a chondro or emerald. They, you know, have some of the same requirements, but they're, you know, they, they like it a lot cooler. I'd say they're probably more forgiving of uh, not being on, you know, exact point with your husbandry. Um, so they're kind of like a good intermediate step between the two husbandry wise well i mean let's be honest bioactives in okay so let's just say people who are coming into this want to be like well man you know i'm willing to i'm willing to put in the work man i want to do bioactive and i love an amazon tree boa is that practical like can we like do that or, or what's your opinion on that i gotta ask you dayton i <laughs> i think that's absolutely a horrible idea i actually think i actually think some of the other arboreals would probably do better in that. Right. Um, well, I don't know. Cause, cause you know, uh, emeralds and, uh, well, I guess green tree pythons are actually kind of a, maybe a smaller, um, a smaller snake, right. but with the emeralds, that would be really hard probably to get rid of the waste in a bioactive enclosure. Um, but my, my biggest thing is, is like my Amazons, they, cruise a lot at nighttime so um i have had them with live plants and they absolutely thrash them um they knock them over they you know crawl all through them they perch on top of them and completely squish them um yeah i don't think they make good um animals for a bioactive enclosure dang I love it. I mean, I just, I just, cause it's honest, you know, and, and, and a lot of people want to 
ignore advice and just say, well, I think I could do it anyways. Right. But we're just kind of being realistic here due to the fact that people have, I don't care how dialed in you want to be with this one enclosure, but your life's going to, something happens in life. You might forget a certain thing or two. And that's kind of like when things really go wrong, but more importantly, we're talking about something that shits at least two, three times a week. Right. I mean, from what I'm, from what I understand, at, at least twice, at least yeah, twice. At least, at I least would twice. Say. <laughs> And do they ever are these do they smear it too? Are they are they like no. hybrids that smear their shit everywhere? I hate no. that. No. Occasionally I'll get one that has um that has crawled through its own feces and it'll have like a stain on it um for a little while. But no, they don't like smear their, their vent on things. I got a question. Uh, Dave. I got a hold on, I got a question real quick. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to bully people in this. I'm just saying I I, I the thing about water, right? Are you a straight tap water? I mean, water is probably a lot better in Oregon, I would say. Uh, not yeah. too, right? So, are you, do you do you believe in your tap water, or do you like to offer fresh, like distilled or like filtered water? I, I mean, shoot, I, I pretty much drink out of the tap. <laughs> yeah. I, okay, I, I lived in Bellingham, and my, I remember my dad was like, "Hey, you know, son, just so you know, the water's a lot more safer up here." I'm like, "Really?" He's like, "Go ahead and try it. Try drink it under the sink." And I was like, "Holy <laughs> shit, <it's> great!" <laughs> And, and it was honestly, it was the best water I've ever had under a sink in my entire life. So that's that's a, that's pretty awesome to have, just so you know. Yeah, I drink wife, tap. I drink tap water too. I my can't. wife lived in uh, Phoenix for a good portion of her life, and I traveled there, and uh, I accidentally drank the tap water there, and oh my god, I could not tell the difference between that and just like I could have drank out of the pool. There would be no difference. <laughs> Damn, man. Summer times are nice up there, too, man. I'll never forget. Some of the best summers are on the lakes up there in uh, the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Got to say. Now, overall, what would you say? Um, you know, I know you you know, typically don't really have seasons, but what is the busiest time of the year for you, you would say? Like, like when you feel like, okay, I'm fucking feeding babies the most here and like really kind of getting shit cracking. Okay. Um, I would say most of my babies – um, are born in winter time, fall, winter. Mm. Um, and that can also coincide with um, a, quite a bit of breeding activity. Uh, so I'd say that's probably my busiest time. Um, it's, it's not, uh, it's, it's, I don't know. Like I'm not, I'm not, it's not like ball pythons. Um, you know, like I'm not rotating a male in between like 10 females and tracking like their follicle, de like their millimeter follicle development, you know, by millimeter and stuff like that. So uh, it's not busy like that ever. <laughs> you, know, you're, you don't want to how many, how many babies a year on average do you uh, do you have? Uh, I'd say between like um, 30 and 60. It's it's. It's not a lot. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, that to me, that, that sounds like a lot. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Of, of Amazon, Amazon babies. Cause I mean, for me, it's, the it's babies. A lot of it's a lot of Amazons. <laughs> are, you yeah. moving, are, you, are you moving them okay, Dayton? D you know, d definitely during a time like right now. Um, is, is everything going with uh, smooth with how you're get, uh, getting your productions in customers' hands and whatnot? I, I would say like the busiest I've ever been. It's been like, it's, there's there's been a little bit of a die down uh, for me anyway uh, in the past I don't know maybe six months but before that um, it's like the busiest I've ever been and like I'm not able to keep up with uh, you know what people are asking for I've, you know I've had waiting lists for litters and stuff like that and I don't I don't just my, I, I'm probably not going to do the waiting list thing again. I, I don't really like that. Damn. Well, okay, well, and, and, and I kind of have an idea, but let's just let the people know, uh, yeah. you know, why does Dayton not like to do waiting? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just like, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of pressure. There's a whole list of people that are like waiting for the animals, you know, and uh, <clears throat> also then, then I have to go through like, the con like contacting them all again, you know, when stuff's ready and then waiting to hear back from them. And some people, you know, take longer than others to respond and it just kind of holds up the line. It it's, it's a, a whole, pain. 
Yeah, it's it's a pain. Some and everyone always has a story. I would only can I can only imagine the stories. You know what I mean? And I, I get and it. Like, also, you know, you might like you know, reach out to someone who's on the list above someone else, and, and like they don't get back to you, and then you've like moved on, and then they decide to get back to you, and it's like, hey. I'm getting back to you about that, you know, snake that we talked about. You're like, oh, I kind of moved on. Too slow, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so too it, it can complicate things. It's easier just to kind of have a list of people that or like a list in my mind, basically, that I know they're looking for certain things. You know, they message me occasionally saying, hey, do you have this? I'm looking for this. And then I just reach out to them and, you know, whoever answers first kind of you know wins dave why don't we shift gears into morphs because i'm real curious about the like where it's headed like where's amazon trebo is headed with the morphs um because from what i can see after talking to randy um fucking crazy shit going on with some of these uh projects and i kind of want to get into that right now and see where things are headed and where you things are at and then if you want to throw any questions on top of that marshall or, or uh dave regarding morphs this is kind of get into the morphs could we start with like the codom or dom projects you know break it down from there and then we can get into the weird ones open open format go ahead yeah uh so the um there's like one one dominant gene that we know of and that's the tiger and that's that's uh, a striped animal, um, not like a tiger, but uh, like a linear linear lines. Um, and that, that's a dominant gene, and that's been around since maybe the uh, early '90s, I think. And that's just a pattern changer, right? So you can have a, a, a red or orange tiger, or a or a you know yellow tiger, or a halloween tiger so and, it, it, yeah, and go, and go ahead and pick whatever tiger you want to maybe use as an example we're on your page right now here dayton so i don't know if there's maybe a, a tiger here on your page oh or any yeah there's a cool bi oh, i'm pointing <laughs> there's a nice bicolor tiger you can see right there on top um, in the top bottom one? left oh, bottom left right here there's also a nice calico tiger you can yeah so that's that's a bicolor tiger okay. um this one actually I, I guess maybe both of them are bad examples because there's other genes at play in here. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a tiger. Um, yeah, and then you can see like a red and white striped one. So that's a calico tiger. That's it's actually like a gene combination. That's a combination of several genes there. Yeah. Is that because uh, several genes make the calico or how, how like, what, what is that exactly as far as? No. Yeah, so that that's, um, so... As far as we know right now, um, calico really is like one gene and it's it's a color morph. So it, red is basically red and calico. They are the same thing. You can have varying degrees of the amount of white that is expressed um, and they can have different patterns, which we don't really know how they're inherited, except for um, tiger. We know that that's a dominant gene. Um, and you can have that in all color forms, you know, gardens, reds, yellows, everything. This is crazy. Is this another tiger in this? Is this another uh, form of a tiger? Yes, I believe so. So, so is that also a tiger calico? Uh, so <laughs> this litter, the red I, and I believe... calico are the same thing. That's that's what that's what it would be, right? Yes, I, I believe so. From what I can see, this litter. Um, was between uh and actually it, it took a little while for me to figure this out until they developed a little bit in their color um but it was between a calico tiger and what i had initially thought was a very low expression calico um turns out that animal was a het um that that um had a lot of red on it um and so i have tigers with orange stripes and i have tigers that are calico tiger i mean this is this has orange stripes in it is this something like we're talking about here yeah, uh, that's, ti that's a tiger yeah right y yes that's that's a tiger um 
Yeah, that has another. Um, that 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 is a tiger het leopard, which is another gene. <laughs> so, um, so would so, that be considered a a uh, bi color tiger? Yes. Or what? That's a bi color okay. tiger. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um. So I guess you could debate, and, and there still is some debate, uh, um, whether or not leopard is a recessive gene or an incomplete dominant gene. Um, and you'll probably hear different things depending on who you talk to. Uh, some people think that uh, the the het the the single gene is is visually discernible from a normal. Um, I'm not fully sold okay. on that idea. Um, I do acknowledge that some of the tigers that I've produced that are 100% het leopard look a little funky. Um, but when I look at other litters, people have produced with possible heads. I have a very hard time saying what is, what is het and what isn't het. I have a very hard time telling them apart. Um, and that, that's just my, my point of view. So that kind of leans it away from, uh, being incomplete dominant and more towards being recessive. Now um, I mean, we're looking at something that's not really... I don't see red in it, and this is also still an Amazon tree ball. I, I would assume, right? But what's what's the deal that's with it? That's a, that's a it tiger, yellow? also, right? Oh kind of, yeah, I see like the faint. The, see the faint striping. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see it. It almost just looks like a complete yellow snake, though. Holy shit! All right. Yeah. So this um, is also potentially another gene combination. Um, so there is a, a gene we call it uh, GCR hypo. And that's from because it originated from Gulf Coast reptiles. And the super form of that, when an animal carries two copies of that gene, is a leucistic Amazon tree boa. And um, originally, uh, Gulf Coast reptiles came out and, uh, you know, said it's an incomplete dominant gene. Uh, the hypos are the single the single gene um, animals, and that's visually discernible. And then the leuc the leucistics are the the super the the dual copy gene carriers. Do the so are there... um, oh, do the leucistics survive? Because I've seen pictures over the years, but not as many as you think you'd see by now. And then that's what I was going to ask. Oh. Uh, so our experience with them so far is they do seem to have a higher mortality rate, um, you know, just based on what was produced and what is now available. Um, I can think of, you know, maybe two adult leucistic Amazon tree boas, and only one of those has like consistently reproduced. Okay. Um, I, my, my, I myself have produced a leucistic Amazon. Um, and it died at about a year of age. Wow. Um, so that's just out of the opinion. blue or, or what yeah, was yeah. the deal? Was it like healthy otherwise? Yeah, it was healthy previously. And then about a week before it died, um, it uh, developed like some sort of lump in the chest stomach area. And then it, it, it died after that. It's a bummer. Hmm. Okay. Um, so, by the way, MJ, I sent you a few images over Messenger showing some examples a little more simpler in the tiger one, the leopard, and also, what was that jet black Amazon tree boa picture that used to pop around all the time back in the day? Is that legit? Yeah, that is legit, and that's actually a leopard. Okay, just by itself, but it's just a good, like, crazy example of it, or? It's actually not even, like, it's less than, I would say it's less than common, but it's not um, completely unheard of or even like replicated. Um, there was just a litter produced in Austria, I think, um, in 2021. Um, and there were several almost black animals. There was one, at least one completely fully black animal. And that was from um, very clearly visual leopard to very clearly visual leopard it wasn't like from a an odd looking leopard to an odd looking leopard this is insane i mean dave just shot me these pics i'm bringing them up yeah. whatever yeah. you want what, what the fuck's happening here this is nuts yeah so that's that's um as far as we uh know right now i can't ever say that like 
I've raised one of those up and, and then um, produced with it. But that that is a leopard. And you can see some of the pattern under underlying there as well, which um, what I've been told, because I, I've never like seen one, um, you know, develop into maturity. It seems as though uh, some of that black background fades and the pattern becomes bolder as it matures. This is just black. Yeah. Holy shit. And this is this is considered a visual leopard. Nothing else is in this? Yes. Wow. And a few of those you could kind of see, not that one. I can't really tell on that one. I'm looking at it on my phone, but the previous one you could kind of see the leopard uh pattern, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like on the sides. You could really see it. Like not it's like, yeah. obviously not like it's fucking a ball python leopard, but I'm just saying, like it's you could definitely see the spots. It's 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 yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's right. You can't tell me this is a real thing. This is what's really going to get me an Amazon tree bow. This is fucking. <laughs> nice. Um. So what's, what's I've got a go um, I've got a funny story that just happened uh, a few nights ago, actually, and it kind of co coincides with what you're saying. Or like this is going to get me into Amazon tree bows. And I was watching a, a YouTube video. Uh, someone's showing off like a litter of boa constrictor, um, and he was talking about how, you know, these boas were like fire engine red, you know, and it was like, it was a, it was a very expensive boa and it looked super cool. And, and it was uh, a mixture of multiple genes. Um, but my wife was like, that's kind of misleading. Uh, you know, like that's a cool snake, but that's not like red, red. <laughs> I was right. like, yeah. It's not okay. red like like an Amazon tree boa, you know, like which is I mean, you can have like basically the baseline Amazon tree boa, tree boa and, and like you're showing up on the screen there. It's um, funny. Yeah. Why do you say that, Dayton? Because, you know, Lisa just asked out to Lisa. Uh, she was just in the chats right now saying if the leopards turn brown um, and, and I have a I have a I have an exantic Malukin who's like, what, what a gorgeous snake I've been raising up. But I'm starting to see that blue slowly turn into like a brownish tint. It's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Love the snake still, but is that the same thing with the leopard? Do these become more of a brown after a while, or do they stay black? Um, it kind of depends. There, there does seem to be um, some variation. Uh, you do see some browner um, leopards, uh, but you also, I mean, like I have one that's fairly dark. I kind of like refer to it as like a purple-ish looking um color uh it, it's not really purple but uh, maybe you can picture what i'm saying uh like a like a purplish gray color right um and then i i have some that are they're mature but i i wouldn't say they're you know they're they're young they haven't been bred yet really um and they're very light where um they have very light gray almost white basically and then very dark spots that are are not muddy at all they're very like solid spots that are black yeah yeah um, the, one, the one that yeah, i got from like you is kind of in in between it's like it kind of a, got a gray background with uh kind of a dark brown dark brown spots pretty contrasty though yeah very contrasty but um typically what i see from some of the the stuff that they post in europe there's a lot less contrast um mm. with some of those leopards yeah. um, okay well how about this um you know every community kind of has a direction what's your community's direction are you guys lineage are you guys like do you guys have some true morph guys that are just kind of mixing things up to see what you're going to get like you know what's it like in that community when you get into it yeah good question. yeah okay um i mean i guess uh i would i would say predominantly um it's kind of like a morph thing even although <clears throat> uh, I, let me see how i'm gonna say this <laughs> there's no wrong answer buddy and it'll be fine i promise yeah i would say some of the bigger breeders with amazon trebos uh like myself and rory um, you know, some of the names you mentioned earlier, or even, uh, you know, Marshall, he, he's working with, or we're working with predominantly the morphs. 
Um, and that's because there's so much uh, like questions ar around a lot of them, you know, how they're inherited and, and stuff like that. So there, there's kind of a lot of work to do around that and, um, and, and, and proving out how those morphs are inherited. And also, <laughs> in my opinion, those seem to be, uh, you know, some of the best sellers like like that's kind of what people are looking for um, yeah just the colors that they just pop more than your wild caught you know standard amazon you know yeah and also i think people like to be able to say hey you know if i buy this or if i spend money on this um i'm able to replicate that you know uh so i i do kind of think that's what's driven um more people to get involved in it and people from other species to kind of like branch out and say, Hey, I might be kind of interested in the Amazon tree boas. But okay. that being said, there, there's a huge portion of people that are, I don't know, you would call maybe purists and mm. um, they just want to, uh, you know, they're less interested in the morphs. They kind of want to keep, uh, you know, the mixtures uh, of what you see produced in litters and stuff like that. And um, I don't know, it seems like sometimes uh, they are frustrate, frustrated with people that try to say, you know, something is inherited this way or that way, you know. And, and I, I, I can see how it's confused and complex things for sure, like after a while, because because then you have some people who are just going to politically favor certain things and convince other people. And that's how that all starts, like the ball python game. It's fucking like it's all it's just too much. You know what I mean? Um, but also to each their own. You can kind of, you know, it's it's really not up to us. It's whatever's being produced. Right. Like we can't we can't we can't really hate on what's here and what's happening. It's, it is what it is, you know. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I, yeah, I, I like it all, um, you know, and uh, I didn't have any any morphs uh, when I initially got into Amazon tree boas. Um, you know, my first Amazon tree boa was what you would call a Halloween phase garden. Um, that was my first one. That had to be my first favorite Amazon tree boa I've ever saw was like that Halloween looking one and the eyes and just pretty intense looking, very intense looking. Um, but never really appealing to a new keeper, I don't feel like. I feel like it's more like, holy shit, like it almost looks venomous, you know what I mean? But it's not like, but if you have no idea what you're really looking at and you only keep ball pythons or hog noses or something, you're gonna really have no idea, you know, what's going on with that snake. And 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 it's I just don't see like the more fragile person coming into this jumping into Amazons at all, you know what I mean? Um, but that's kind of why it is what it is, it's really not meant for the, the, the beginner keeper, as you were saying earlier, right? I've honestly, I've been doing this for a long time uh, exclusively with this species. And there are quite a few people who um, put together collections really quickly. And they may even have, you know, um, a good year or season, like reproducing animals, maybe even multiple good seasons. And then uh, they completely disappear um from from the species or, or from the group of people that keep you know amazons i've okay. seen a lot of that so um you know back to um let's say basic genetics out of this stuff because as you know like when that wild stuff comes in they'll drop a litter there'll be an orange one a red one a yellow one a garden phase um, right. You know, if I go out tomorrow and I buy, let's say, a really nice striped um, tiger male, a yellow one, and I go and find a nice yellow female, am I going to get a high percentage of yellow babies or are we going to go right back to there's four or five different options and I have minimal control over it? Uh, it depends a little bit. Um, so, again, we are starting to figure some of this out. Uh, so, calico is a color. It's I mean, I mean, I guess everything's sort of a natural occurring color with Amazon tree boas um, because it doesn't really seem to affect them much in the wild. Um, mm. But yes, so we know red, a color. We know how it's inherited, recessive. Um, and then there's starting to be quite a bit of good evidence that garden is also recessive. 
um, because there are there are litters, um, you know, of full gardens. They're all gardens. You know, the parents of garden to garden. You're getting all garden. Um, there's starting to be some stuff with uh, garden and calico. Um, Rory, I've seen my... those. Yeah, those 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 are sick looking. Yeah. Um, so there are actually some proven um, combinations. Um, what was thought as funky gardens that appear in red or calico litters, those are actually um, a dual expression garden calico. Um, and the garden kind of masks that gene a bit. Um, and so you get something that is sort of in between a calico and a garden, which are those um, purple garden, you know, maroon gardens, they, people call them lavender gardens. Um, I, I'm sure maybe you guys have seen some of those. I've seen I don't know yeah. if I saw it, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like some interesting uh, pairings have happened where like you've taken one of those um, garden calicos that's from the calico lineage and you've paired them to a visual or you know a a red calico um and then you've gotten a full litter of red calicos so no gardens um and, and so that kind of that's kind of showing like the separation that animal is carrying that gene in order to make that full litter of red calicos um and also because no gardens were expressed in that litter, your calico is not carrying that garden gene. Okay, so MJ is going to hate everything about this, but uh, when I was kind of looking on there for different kinds of like, I put yeah. in garden calico and that stuff that popped up. So would that be what you're talking about with the red going in there? No, that's a very visual, like high expression calico. Why couldn't you just send that to me like you've been sending the other pics, Dave? I'm confused. Well, the last one I sent you didn't show them, so I just thought we were off that. But you're right. I knew you were going to hate that. I said it before I did that, but I'll send you some other stuff. <laughs> all, right, um, all right. So the calico gene, is that kind of like, would you say that's the most sought after gene? Like it's going to make the most sense to put calico into as much as you got going on? Yeah. yeah. It is absolutely. Uh, go ahead, Marshall. I was going to say, I think leopard, I mean, as far as like, what's the most expensive right now? Leopard is more, I mean, leopard's more expensive than a, a nice calico. Um, calico, uh, I don't know. The Amazon genetics are just so weird. Uh, like one of the blackest snakes that I have is a cal is a female calico that's been uh, gravid a couple of times. And she looks like, you know, all except for like the top, 15% of her body, like from the head back looks just as black as the snakes in those pictures you were showing earlier. And she's, you know, a, a full grown adult. And that, that's, that's a, Calica. That Calico is a, a fan favorite. A lot of oh, yeah? people like that Calico. I, I think it's a real cool looking one. Yeah, she's cool. I mean, she's, you know, jet black, iridescent. Um, so it's, it's odd that you can get that uh, uh, darkness from, that gene and also get the super white ones, the super, you know, um, like Randy was put like a lot of snakes that he has are like super high white calicos and yours too. Um, well, the, the calicos and, kind of go through a color progression as they mature. So they, they yeah. start out when they're really young with those very defined white, uh, pattern. Um, or, or, or they develop white as they mature, but that white pattern, I, I can't think of, um, any adults really that still have like super defined white pattern. It, it models out as they mature. Yeah. It gets muddy. Yeah. Well, you know, okay. it's pretty typical with Amazons that they do sort of, uh, develop, uh, you know, random melanin as they age. Um, and so like you see that with the calicos, but also, um, <clears throat> with the calicas, they do tend to develop like that white washing as they mature or, or additional white. And so it kind of like blends together um, as they're, as they're adults. Okay. So everything's better with calico. You're going to want to have calico in a lot of my projects when I get this going. Am I right or wrong? 
Uh, yeah, I think you're right, but I also think Marshall's right. So, Red is, is like the most sought after, um, you know, Amazon. Like, that's what catches people's eyes. That's what they ask about. You know, that's what they want. Um, but because it's so popular, like, because it's so popular, there are a lot of them out there now, and, and other people are starting re to reproduce it, you know, not just like, you know, a few people, not just one or two or three people, um, more people are reproducing it. Um, and so the leopard kind of, uh, is like the new hip thing. <laughs> there, there are less of them out there. Um, shoot, it almost, uh, although I'm getting a little scatterbrained here, although they do <laughs> seem to be pretty frequently imported, uh, you know, there it, it was getting pretty scant um, on you know how many leopards were out there. You know, there there weren't very many of them or very many people with them, and so uh, they are, um, you know, more expensive, and that's kind of what uh, some of the more uh, you know hardcore breeders are looking at getting now. Yeah. Okay. Um have there been any projects in Amazon that just just simply didn't make it? It was a proven mutation. Maybe there was a small group of them, and then they disappeared on us. A lot. Uh, yeah. So, um, I mean, shoot, that's almost <laughs> that's almost like happened with like every gene. Not that they've like disappeared, but like they've gone through like a phase of popularity, and then it like crashed, and then. Wow. People are like, hey, where can I get those? Who has some of these, you know? Um, aside from the tiger, the tiger's been like the rock solid morph that's been around forever. Um, there's no real argument to how it's inherited and it combines with everything and, you know, they constantly are reproduced. So Dude. tiger is like the solid gene. Um, as far as genes that uh, have disappeared completely, um, this is like going back to the forum days, like the po pre, uh, you know, Facebook and stuff. Um, but there was a gene that a few people, I think Danny Mendez maybe, um, uh, maybe found it or, or, um, you know, had it. And then it got into maybe one or two people's hands that he was working with mm. and it was called an Aztec. Um, and it, it had some aspects sort of like a leopard gene where um you know the animals sort of uh lighten and darken pretty drastically day and night and then it had like a zigzaggy pattern on its back um i tried to track them down quite a while ago and the last person that had them um i think was no longer no longer in contact or uh I, I might have heard, you know, the animals are gone and I haven't seen anything of them since. Um, so that's like one that has completely disappeared. Um, I know uh, the marble, which we don't really know if it's like a single gene mutation. We're actually kind of leaning away from it being a single mu gene mutation. And um, there might be multiple genes involved for you to, to get the combination of uh, marble. But... Um, I've reproduced a few litters and aside from that, like we maybe produced, we produced one to possibly three visuals and there's one living marble in Europe now. So, um, that, you know, is on the verge or, um, could be going away depending. Um, I have a pretty decent group of living animals with those genetics so i hope they don't go away but mm. um you know it's it's not common i got a question for you dane um with you and rory kind of being the top at this right now um are you guys purposely working with specific projects to not really overlap each other or like anything like that you know that's the most common thing in ball pythons everyone working with the same shit now so it's like and and, and other stuff in a sense i, I like chondros because everyone has like their own 
bloodlines that they put back into each other so that's different but for you like how is it working with you guys and 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 when it comes to you having the most important projects you want to fulfill we have a, a blood pact so if we ever meet in person one of us has to kill the other one no no <laughs> I, 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 i'm just i'm just teasing actually there's there's like no communication between me and rory oh wow that's <laughs> like cool. We don't talk at all. <laughs> we have exchanged a few messages, um, you know, I don't know, a while back. But uh, we do not coordinate anything and we do not speak regularly. Uh, I, you know, like I have no, no beef with him. Um, I just think maybe we're both kind of introverts um, and, and we don't really, <laughs> we don't really, you know, like... I'm not going to put in the effort to be friends with him. You know, like he's, I'm sure he's a good guy and he's, he's nice. And every time, you know, I've heard him on a podcast or I've been on a podcast with him that happened recently. Um, you know, okay. he's, he's an, he's a nice guy and easy enough to talk to. So, but I mean, that, 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 it's almost like, you know, the most, you, you know, that's, that's compared to how I see other shit go down with some people, bro. That's not bad at all. I would think that <laughs> that's fair. You know, I would say, um, you know, because I, you know, Marshall, man, he's, you should see this guy. He's fucking a monster. I'm just kidding. <laughs> only, I, be, I, yeah. only, because he refu- only because he refuses to sell his chondros. He makes people suffer. Everyone out there is suffering, wondering why they can't get their hands on a Marshall Mendes chondro. Just tell me. One, one of these days. Yeah. Maybe it'll be your day. If, if you're, you know, if you're not lucky. on the waiting, not on the waiting list, just ready when they go up, you know. I have heard some brutal stories involving the business side of, uh, you know, reptiles. Uh, um, yeah, I'm probably to my own detriment. I'm pretty bad business wise. It's just like I fell in love with this species and this, you know, keeping reptiles is like a hobby that I've always enjoyed. And it kind of expanded from there. Um, but yeah, pe- people can definitely have different, um, mindsets and I, I have no problem with it being a business. I actually, you know, like I really admire people who, uh, turn their hobbies into businesses yeah. and, you know, do both. But, uh, I do not have the cutthroat ruthless, like business CEO mindset. It's not easy sometimes. Well, um, <laughs> So, you know, but in your community, and I'm not going to say you guys are small, but, you know, compared to other communities, the Amazon tree boat community has got to be a pretty small community. Um, I mean, do you guys think you have more than 20 breeders that are known in the United States, or do you think it's like over under 10? Uh, I, I, I mean, uh, would you say like known to people from that don't keep amazon tree boas because <laughs> well you know, know that may be like well, one or two. <laughs> yeah well no okay for like you guys in your community um you know is like you know how broad are we talking like guys that are just really focused on the game looking to make them better trying to get them to where their next is going to be like you know how many of you guys doing that i would say under 10 okay yeah we'll there's not many yeah there's not many <laughs> Yeah, no problem. I mean, honestly, I think out of all the arboreals, it's definitely one that gets the least amount of attention. And honestly, I think it makes some of the prettiest animals. Um, you know, I kind of made the joke earlier, you know, chondros come with certain problems. Emerald tree bow has come with certain problems. Horror stories that you hear. But like generally, even people that buy like an imported Amazon, you don't hear about a horror story. So, yeah. you know, I think they're really underappreciated and I think their day will come. Um, you know, it's just, you know, you got to get it out to the masses. You got to get them excited about it. Um, well, how about this? Um, you know, what's a price point to get into the game, man? Like, you know, are these like over the top prices on some of this stuff or can you get in at a reasonable price? Yeah. Like the leopard, the left, but how much is yeah. the <laughs> Yeah. What's the top? What's the bottom, man? Like, let's talk about that. Okay. Um, so I guess if you're, Getting into some of the gene combinations, Um, you know, Calico Calico Tiger is fairly, uh, you know, reasonable, um, especially for like, you know, the demand that's out there. Um, You know, you can 
get a calico tiger probably from like 1200 bucks to uh maybe 2500 um that might even be at the high end now mm. um you know maybe around like two thousand dollars probably for for a really spectacular looking uh calico tiger baby um, like obviously we're talking like a, a a juvenile or something young yeah yeah uh, yeah um yeah uh leopards a bit more because it's more in demand now uh and, and there are fewer of them going around uh that's about two thousand dollars mm. um i mean if, if you wanted to put together uh you know a decent like breeding group with some of the morphs like you could spend a decent amount of money um but you would be pretty much at the cutting edge of amazon tree bows if you did that right you're, you're basically cutting the line in a sense yes right which you're, okay. you, you cost it costs to do that so it makes sense okay and, you know, not to shit on females for a lot of these projects, but, I mean, would you encourage people to go out and get that primo male, drop the money, and then get a female and still end up with very similar results? Like, if I'm going to do leopards, I don't have to put a million dollars in my females, right? I could spend the money on my leopard. Um, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I, I think it's smart um, if you wanted to, uh, you know, drop a decent amount of money that it's probably better for that animal to be a male because it can spread its genes out um, to more females and it can reproduce earlier, you know? So I, I yeah, I, I think that's just kind of uh, common sense. Um, but don't you think the future, the future is going towards like, like, you know, combos. So, you know, if you want to stay on the cutting edge, yeah, you need a, you need a, a, a whatever a uh, uh, calico tiger um but you also probably want to get leopard in there um and you know and leopard's recessive right so it's you know it'll take you either want to buy recess uh, uh het het leopards that you know so i, mean, I don't know when you get it when you throw het leopard into a calico tiger what is you know that that probably what i, I would think that's uh doubles the price or something uh, so if you threw, um, wait, 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 hang on one more time. Go ahead. Say that. Say that one more time. Sorry. Like, like a calico tiger that's het for a leopard. Yeah. I mean, yes, that would, uh, significantly There's probably not many of those out there, right? Yeah. Um, no one's, no one's sold one of those. Um, you know, so, uh, if there are some, out, no one's even like, uh, really, no one's even really uh, mentioned having produced those. Mm. So, um, you know, if there are some of those out there, it's they're few and, and they're being held back. But yes, because there are gene com like they're starting to be gene combinations. It uh, it is important to, um, you know, sort of have both sexes. Um, so, you, right. so you can kind of. Uh, like get on without having to. Uh, you know, like prove out het animals and stuff like that. Okay. What's uh, a liger? Yeah, what is that? I mean, a liger is a leopard tiger. There are three yeah. of them in the world. Wow. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's a striped. It's a striped leopard. Wow. Okay. I think I like my spots. I'm not gonna lie, but I mean, they must look cool. I can only imagine. Mm. Yeah. I didn't want to assume a liger was a liger. It was so obvious. I just didn't think it was possible. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that that's another fairly in the last few years uh, recent gene combination. Um, Rory has produced two of them. I've produced one of them. Um, I have a gravid female right now that hopefully I I should be able to make some more. Um, so it's becoming. It's it's not just you know one or uh, I mean it, it is still just one or two animals but yeah it's it's like sort of the next gene combination that that people are shooting for and and then it'll be about putting the red in there and then you have a yellow version and then you're gonna see what the garden phase is gonna exactly. be and that's just keep on moving and moving right. so far nobody has made a colored tiger so awesome. there's that but um, you know I think if that were possible. Um, having some of these, uh, you know, like colored, you know, 100% are het 
um, animals would increase the chances of doing that. Like you would want to have colored hets to produce a colored leopard if that were possible. Um, you know, there's a lot of these imported every year and I feel like there's always gravid females. Like, is there anything popping up in the United States? I mean, you got a guy in your speed dial, you're hitting up a certain time of the year to see if something funky's going on or like, there's gotta be stuff coming in, right? Yeah. Um, I have had a few imports, um, just like over the entire span that I've kept Amazon tree bows. And I really, I really don't have any interest in, in doing that. Okay. Even if it was a new mutation to work with, that would be hard to pass up. You know, if, if I were able to get my hands on an albino, like a T positive or even a, you know, like a T negative albino, I, I might have to, you know, I'll just, uh, I'll just have a different room in the house that, that <laughs> animal, that that's animal's room. You know, that's the albino Amazon's room now. Yeah. No, I, I think a T positive would be the most perfect mutation or some kind of true hypomelanistic considering the colors you guys are working with. I like my T negative stuff, but I find the T negative comes with problems in boas. Um, so I don't know if I'd strive for my T negatives with Amazons. I know that there have been several importers that have like gotten their hands on them and um, those animals have, have gone They're They're not around. Yeah. They can be weak, and that's the negatives in a lot of species. Um, you know, hey, the big thing hey, is, oh, I just want to say, go and finish what you're saying, but after that, I want to show these snakes that you just sent me. I'm very curious about Oh, them. no, that's fine. I was just going to say with T-positives, if someone would be able to ID that animal out of the wild if they even came across it, I mean, I can see a T-positive maybe get it mixed into a bag and nobody realize what they have. Yeah, so how do we get there? Yeah. How do you that, get that? That's just a... Yeah, that's just a bicolor, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's yes. that's not a very rare uh yeah, that that's pretty common look right there. Really? Uh, so that, that's that's cool. a wild type phase or yeah. is that something that you can land breed? So I would say this this is a, a line bred wild type. So this is line bred to reduce the melanin that you would see on the wild version of that. So the wild version would be maybe what you call like a tricolor and it's just like a modeled bicolor or, you know, it's got a little bit of black pattern on that, but that that's just a refined, uh, you know, bicolor. Uh, I'm, Marshall has, I think recently produced some of those with his calico litters. I haven't made any bicolors yet. Everything's pretty much been like all of the, uh, uh, I've done two pairings of calico to calico. So those have both been, you know, 100% calico. Okay. And then I've done one pairing that was calico to uh, a female, just like an orange tiger, I guess you would call her, or a yellow tiger, like basically yellow with orange stripes. Mm -hmm. um, and apparently she's also het red because that's where I got my calico tiger. Um, I produced several calicos from that pairing. Um, and also several tigers. Uh, Were they bicolors? Bicolor I don't know. Nah, uh, well, but yeah, I guess they were. Yeah, because that's what the mom is. The mom's a bicolor tiger. She's right. got, you know, the yellow. Yeah, yellow with the orange with the orange stripes. Yeah. So like that's basically that uh, the tiger is taking that that um, that bicolor pat that orange pattern and it's making it linear. You know, so like you have right cleanly by colors they're just not their tiger as well right um i gotta ask you dayton right now when it comes to you or what with every litter at this point what are the ones that you're looking for i mean i'm sure it de depends on what litter we're talking about but like like what is it that you're looking for in a holdback at this point um so i I'm kind of, I'm I, again. I'm kind of like uh, what I said earlier. I'm kind of focusing on morphs, and so like I, I'm looking for you know the the next like combination or uh, you know the animals that are that will make it for me will allow me to make the next combination. You know, so the animals that are carrying multiple genes, um, and, and like yeah, there's like 
things that I prefer, um, you know, over others that you know I'll select an animal for. But with you know how many mutations that we have right now that we're working with, and um, you know how new it is, like we are, we only have you know a few. Uh, aside from calico tigers, those are gene mut like that's a combination or whatever, or maybe not even really because uh, you know calico is a color mutation, so you've got color and pattern mutation. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to keep the the next like visual gene combo or you know gene combo. Uh, it's not much. It's it's kind of like ball you know ball python. Uh, kind of deal you know you're well the infant the infancy stages of ball pythons where you just want the snake that's got the most you know got the most genes in it at this point yeah yeah um i i really i, I really the the line breeding kind of happens with with that as you're chasing the the gene mutations you know so like Right. you'll get those really refined bicolors and stuff like that out of, you know, a calico litter, a calico to head calico litter or whatever. Um, so I just really haven't put a lot of effort into, uh, you know, um, I don't know, refining color traits over generations, I guess. Are there, are there any certain morphs or um, yeah, are any certain morphs we're trying to stay away from? Uh, no. Cool. No fatals yet? No breed this to that? You get a weird animal? Like, everything's been fine except for Lucy's? No, no spiders? <laughs> yeah, no spiders? No, uh, that way, way. no, no, like, no, like, degenerative disorders, no, like, neurological disorders, nothing like that. Okay. Um, again, with the Lucy's, there seems to be a high mortality rate, but um, I have a couple gravid females this year that i hope will produce some lucy's and uh you know i'll see how those go uh i know there are adults out there and you know like rory's got a reproductive adult that he just produced some lucy's from you know so that's cool um i i, th I think it's viable um and i'm still pursuing that so just I, there hasn't been enough reps at it you're, you you believe like you just there just needs to be more you know goals at the plate i feel like right yeah, uh, you know, like, I mean, I just off the top of my head, you know, there are less than uh, less than 10 Lucy's like ever produced, you know, so like that's just too small of a number, in my opinion, to make any uh, definitive decisions on. I get that. Now, is that something a bunch of people are chasing now? Does everybody have something in their collection that's going to get them to a Lucy? Uh, no, not everybody has that. Um, and I know, you know, several prominent Amazon tree boa breeders who have been chasing uh, Lucy, um, who have been unable to reproduce one. Um, and even now, you know, Rory's had a Lucy, a visual Lucy uh, male for, I don't know, maybe eight years or something like that. And he's just getting around to producing his first visuals this year, just a few weeks ago. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's still in its infancy. I do uh, like if someone wanted to get a Lucy from me, um, I, you know, I would be hesitant to sell it just because of how few there are, but also, you know, that would be an animal that I would hang on to for, you know, well over a year before, I would let it go to someone and, you know, I would probably let it go to one of my buddies if, if I did let it go for now. Yeah, I, I hate to harp on the negative stuff guys, but, um, so you said you noticed there was a little bit of a growth or something inside the animal about the week before it died. Now, is that a isolated case or has that been the case with all the Lucy's? That has been my experience with the only Lucy that I've produced. Okay. And I, I've reached out to some of the other people and I don't know why their animals died, but they've just told me that their animals died. Damn. So the first subject, you guys don't really bring it up to each other. Don't ask, don't tell. Don't ask, don't tell. I respect that. Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I, I asked, you know, like if they had like a necropsy done or anything like that. I, I don't, I don't recall. That's fine. Um, Are you going to say something, Joe? 
Mar- I thought Marshall was going to say something. Were you going to say something, Marshall? No, uh, no. Yeah, but I forgot. I don't know what it was. I forgot. So, so Marshall, kind of thought. sorry. If you've never also, seen the podcast before, we, we raise our hand every once in a while. There's no shame in that. Just pop it up there. <laughs> we'll, we'll make our rounds, guys. It's almost best. I also want to mention that, like, when I'm tracking down some of these animals that are, like, you know, hard to come by or um, are becoming rarer, you know, the, the morphs, uh, yeah. they usually have exchanged multiple hands as well. Um, you know, like, like I said, there have been several people that have sort of come to prominence with the species and then like vanished. And then it becomes very hard to track down where their animals go. And mm-hmm. usually it's not, um, it's not like one of the other top breeders that's buying up their collection. Um, it's being scattered amongst, you know, anybody really. Okay. I have to ask you, Dayton, like, you know, I know it's not a tremendous load, a lot of snakes, but still, I mean, 60 or so Amazon tree boas, uh, meaning going to a lot, you know, a few people. I mean, how much of that is coming back? Like, Hey man, I killed the snake or, or like how many times are you having to like fucking embedded information in people's head on what to do? Or do you feel like you've been pretty lucky with getting people to figure it out and not have to come back to you? It does occasionally happen. Um, and I wish people would reach out to me sooner about it. Yeah. Like for sure. when they're having the issue, I wish they would reach out to me. So like maybe I can help them or, you know, guide them or something. Um, but it used, it usually seems to be, I find out later on, like, Hey, I got this animal. It died, you know? And I find out either like they're asking, you know, like they're, they're asking me for another animal and I'm like, Hey, you know, you've bought an animal from me. How's it doing? You know? And, and you know, they're, they're saying like this happened or, um, you know, like I've had, I've had an animal that I've still, I've sold at a show. Um, and then I see it, uh, you know, come up on my local, uh, Craigslist, you know, mm-hmm. um, not too long afterwards. Um, and that's unfortunate. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think you do need to be like responsible um, at 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 the at the point of sale and not just sell to anybody. You know, like you kind of need to vet them a little bit. Um, but there's also things uh, where like where maybe you would be willing to help out by like saying, uh, Hey, you know, like if you can't, you know, take care of this animal, you know, like I can take care of it. So like, let me know. But like, I've got to worry about like the health of my collection, you know? So like I can't have, I can't be shipping animals to people, um, them, you know, having issues for whatever reason and then saying, Hey, ship it back to me and I'll, I'll take care of it. Um, yeah. Because you just don't know what you could pick up, you know, like that would, that would be extremely how, risky with, with a collection. How established are you getting babies before you ship them out? How many, like how many meals? And do you, do you think they're, they're pretty uh, bulletproof after, you know, I mean, it, Like you're saying, you're going to have when you're selling chondros or emeralds or, you know, anything that's that's requires, you know, any type of uh, advanced husbandry, you're going to have you're going to have people that you send them an animal and it doesn't do well. I mean, it's not a large percentage, but it it happens. Um, But how like do you do you feel like once you get, you know, like what do you do? Ten meals, 20 meals. Once they get to that point, are they uh, pretty rock solid? If the if the person that's getting them knows what they're doing, halfway. Yeah, I mean, I think I think ten meals is pretty solid. Um, but I'm actually going to start um, like further establishing animals on uh, on top of that. I would like to. Um, I've had some things where like, yeah, I've had some issues with, um, you know, animals that I thought were really, you know, established or whatever, um, because of, because of shipping, like I've had some customers, you know, have issues, uh, you know, 
getting some animals to eat or something like that. And I, it's not like super common, but it's something I don't like to hear. Also, yeah. you know, with a litter I just had this year, you know, um, they're, they're coming up on about a year of age and I'm just able now to kind of sort out what is what and like what's mm. a visual expression of, you know, the gene and stuff like that. So um, I would I would really like to maybe uh, start holding them back longer and consequentially they'll be better established. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, let's let's talk about how it works with chondros, Marshall. I mean, typically, like especially for you, like you had a lot of stuff you held back because you wanted to see what direction it would go into. But that's almost the case for almost any good looking designer chondro. You don't want to just sell it right off the bat because you want an understanding on where what direction it's headed because that can yeah. determine, that can determine a whole different price, right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, when 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 you're buying babies, you're, you're kind of gambling, you know, like a, a, an unchanged baby from a designer line is going to be worth more probably than like a, a low expression yearling of that, uh, you know, whatever those genes are. Right. So, so, you know, that's why I like keeping them until they change color. Not, not, you know, not because it's basically because I want to keep the nicest ones for myself. Right. Um, so, but there, there comes a point if you have 30 or 60 babies, like Dayton said he had earlier, I mean, it's not practical. You can't keep, you know, you're not going to keep 60, 60 baby chondros back, you know? <laughs> I mean, unless that's like all you, you know, that's your okay, only, no. uh, don't test me, motherfucker. I'm, I, I, <laughs> if I could, I would. I swear to God. Another thing with the, the chondros, um, it seems to be like you can't really um, probe them until uh, they're right. a bit older. Takes like a good um, you can, that, that is not the case with Amazons. Yeah. Right. You can sex them, but uh, with shed shed testing now. But I, I think the shed testing is, is – uh, I don't know what's going on with it. They've been doing it for years and suddenly, I don't know. They're having some equipment for, I don't know. I heard this secondhand information, but they're having some equipment problems or, or something where they're not able to do chondro shed tests right now. Um, I think it's probably because they're just, you know, there's probably more money and it's probably more uh, uh, lucrative to do the, the ball Python stuff right now, but they have been shed testing green tree tree pythons for a while so on the amazons though do you do you probe them or pop them or what do you do it like right when they're you know just born or what's how do you by what size do you sex them i probe them um and okay. i typically i typically will probe them after their first shed okay. oh so right away then okay yeah can you do a strum like you do with like Colombian boas, corn snakes? Just kind of strum the tail, a little bit of pressure, and see if you feel the shift of like the heavy pins moving out of the way. I can't say that I've really given that like a whole uh, try. I, I have done it on the boas. I I I I've felt that, but I, I can't say that I've really tried that. Okay, I find it works with small corn snakes too. So if it's worrying about it being too delicate, I think as long as your touch is right, I'd be curious if you could do that with that species. Yeah, but I'm. Yeah. It, I don't know. Like it, it kind of it seemed, or it seems a little uh, rough to me. Like it kind of seems like popping, but I guess it's 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 kind of not, um, or it, it doesn't damage the snakes that people do it on. I guess so. Yeah, I I mean it's. It's already fragile as it is, a baby chondro, right? But goddamn, it's just, it, it seems impossible, like when it's fucking first born for it until like at least a year and a half or so. And I, I, I mean, I, I know it's not always accurate to go off shed plugs, but it almost is, though, right? Like if you see those fucking, oh, it things, totally is, yeah. Oh, cool. it, it, Some people say it's not always accurate. Start... Like I'm like I'm, I see what I see. That's bullshit. Like, yeah, it's 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 accurate. You just have to get you just have to get the right shed. Right. Like sometimes they don't shed hemipenes, right? Some, but I mean, once you see hemipenes for the first time, or once you see the, you know, the female version, you know what it looks like. Like it's a hundred, it's hundred percent. Some are growers, not showers, man. What are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we got to get some wrap-up questions ready. Um, I could go first. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm already ready to rock and roll, and then we'll go to Marshall, and then we'll go to Dave. 
Um, so my wrap-up question for you here, Dayton, um, for anyone out there who's already well-established, like meaning like let's say they've kept Amazon for a couple years or whatever and could be maybe some of your customers, but they just – like now after maybe hearing some stuff from you or whatever, they, they, they might maybe want to take it a step further, meaning invest into uh, – a certain project uh any tips for that like any you know we're kind of maybe asking this for the person who's already kept amazons and it's maybe ready to take it to the next level uh you are you asking like what what uh what they should work with yeah like what's a what's a good project you like what's a project you feel good about right now like maybe something that you would maybe advise someone hey man i you know maybe get your hands on this if that's what you're into or whatever just some advice for anyone out there looking to take it to an investment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I would say, I would say working with the, the leopard gene, um, it's yeah. probably my favorite right now. Um, and you know, there's still not a lot of them out there and we have seen it combined with another gene. Um, so like there is some, uh, potential if you wanted to mix in some other things. So I, I think that's a, a fantastic project. Noted. Definitely. <laughs> Go ahead, Marshall. Uh, where do you see the, the, the market going uh, over the next, say, three or four years with, you know, like what, what, uh, or let me ask a different way. What morphs do you think that are, have not been produced yet or combos that we're going to, we're just like, you know, on the cusp of, of seeing? Okay. Um, let's see here. Like, like what are some um, of your projects that, that you're working with that, you know, like you have the, the, the things to, to make the, the, the snake you want, but you don't, uh, you haven't made it yet. Oh yeah. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plead the fifth on that one. For wow. Now. That was a good one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, thank you, Marshall. That was a good one, buddy. Yeah. I'm gonna plead the fifth on that hey, one. Hey, Roy, hey, Roy, okay. Hey, it Rory paid him for that one, by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rory, is Rory on the chat? You know, <laughs> he's, he's, he's incognito right now. <laughs> uh, I, I'm kidding. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass on that one for now. Not, not to be like greedy or stingy or anything like that. I respect it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I respect it. Oh, yeah. Come on, Dave. Come hot, buddy. Why did you pick Amazon's? Hmm. Um, because Emerald Tree Buzz intimidated me as like my first snake getting back into snakes. Wow. Yeah. And I stumbled across them, uh, sort of like researching Emerald Tree Buzz, and I stumbled across that Halloween animal, and I was like, "What the f is that thing? That's insane looking." Hmm. And it only cost me a hundred bucks or something like that. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and what year was that that you got into the game for Amazon's, bud? Yeah. 2008. Yeah. I can't even tell you what I was doing in 2008. I've, I've been continuously keeping Amazon tree bows since 2008. Damn. Respect. Now, I, and I got to, I want to just kind of one more time, not one more time, but just mention as far as Amazon Trebo is being sold at shows, do you ever see yourself being at a show at a, like, like, like a big show, maybe a Tinley or a reptile super show uh, with the table with your productions at some point, or is that something you never really want to be a part of? Um, I don't see me vending at any of those shows, uh, but I do, I would like to travel and attend some of those shows. Um, they seem to be sort of like predominantly on the East coast. Um, and that's kind of like, like, I remember even being, uh, you know, a, a kid or a young teen and like wanting to go to the like Daytona show in Florida. And, and I've never done that. Mm. Um, and it, and it seems like relatively low hanging fruit. Like that's something I can accomplish, you know, if I want to, do, <laughs> if I want to do that. Yeah. So, I'm going to get you down to reptile super show. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Marshall Marshall's coming. That's soon. right. I'm coming. Coming to January. Um, as far as like vending at shows, I think um, I don't think like uh, it would. It's great for like sales. Um, aside from like, if you have that person that's already in the community that attends your local show, like Randy, 
Mm-hmm. You know, then then you can maybe like uh, just bring a box and keep it under the table and be like, hey, Randy, come take a look at this. Um, but right. like for your average, your average person attending like a show, I don't think an Amazon Tribo is necessarily a good snake for them. Right. And I, I don't think most of them are actually interested in Amazon Tribos, although it does catch their eye and they make a very good, um, you know, display and people want to stop and look at it. Uh, but not necessarily. I, I, I would say one thing I wish there was more at shows, and it's something that's kind of from the past. And Marshall, you know what exactly what I'm talking about. Rico Walder and a group of guys back in the day used to always come together, right, and display all their fucking crazy chondros on a table. Um, yeah. What was that? Uh, the Chondro Coalition. What was Chondro that? Coalition? Yeah. yeah. Right, right. So I, I'm just saying, man. Even though, like, not really the animal to buy, and maybe you don't need to sell them, but man, I just think it would be amazing to see some of your productions just on a table for people to admire, and then obviously with the right questions and you know interview style asked to the people inquiring, you know, you know who the fuck to sell to and who not to sell to. But either way, I. I um, I don't know. I admire stuff like that. I admire people just bringing their work and just saying like, listen, I'm not really here to sell. I'm just check it out. Keep it moving. Don't touch. <laughs> I, I do do that at our local shows and oh, cool. I attend when uh, Nick Mutton's in town and, and goes like we do. I do and I go hang out with him and do the show with him and everything like that. So Nick Mutton fan, you say? Yeah, I, I like Nick. Yeah. Nick's I cool. uh, like I, I met him because of uh tree boas and, and you know we're we've been friends now for oh, over a decade maybe now i have a really cool 2013 herp nation magazine that i just got my hands on from uh, rami and there were like conversational pieces of certain people nick mutton was in there obviously his face was right there and it was just cool to see shit even though and, and Rami and Jay Bru or not Jay Brewer, my bad. No, Jay uh Jay Summers got pretty pissed at me because I was like, Man, is this back in the day? And they're like, motherfucker, back in the day. It's that's not even back in the day. I was like 10 years ago, man. I'm like, well, fuck, I'm sorry. You know, I don't really associate to everyone that's been doing this since the 90s. Um, but yeah, you know, I got I respect people who've been around that long and who've been really providing shit to the hobby before it was what it is today. Very mainstream today, which isn't a bad thing, but it's like I don't want to say all the wrong people are getting the fucking flowers and shit, but kind of is. It's kind of like, dude, you know who really has been doing shit for this long? And that's, you know, but you got to love reels and TikTok and shit. What are you going to do? It's kind of funny because like Ryan Young also attends shows with yeah. us sometimes. <laughs> Ryan Young's but, a team, man. Yeah. I love Ryan. So like, I mean, Portland shows or, or Hillsboro, you know, Oregon shows, they're not like big reptile shows, but like there are some people there that are hidden um, <laughs> at, our, at our tiny local reptile show. So. Listen, this has uh, been a great podcast, honestly, because, you know, Marshall's a good friend of mine and, and he likes the Amazon tree boas and God damn it. So do I. Dave's a huge fan. And I got to say, after all this, Dayton, having Randy on, then you, I'm definitely not going to wait another two, three years to bring Amazon tree boa content back to this channel. And, and, and I'm geeked out over the leopard, man. I'm not, I'm probably going to be on your bumper a little bit and just kind of keep it in touch because, you know, if, if it comes to me coming into any project, I'm a fucking snob, man. I only like working with the best. So um, I appreciate you coming on the show. I do do run some hot seat questions before I let you go. I'm going to hit you some hot seat questions um, and then I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of your night. You cool with that? Yeah, sounds good. Thanks All for right. having me. Yeah, for sure. Hot seat questions for Dayton, HD at Boreals. And, and by the way, best way to kind of follow your work would be Instagram, right? That's the, for anyone out there yeah. who's just curious. Yeah. Okay. And uh, his uh, link to his Instagram is in the description below. Um, Dave, Marshall, and with the last two hot seat questions, get it brewed up and come correct. Can you, you know, be a little creative here? All right. Dave, I'm mainly talking to Dave, not you, Marshall. Dave's the one who's just fucking like, you know, you like the beach? <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. Hot seat questions for Dayton coming in hot. Let's go. You ready, Dayton? Right. Here we go. Frozen thought or live? Frozen thought. If it came down to you hatching, like getting a clutch of eggs, would you ever cut a clutch of eggs or would you never cut a clutch of eggs? Uh, I, I, would, I would cut a clutch of eggs. Chondros, would it be more of a favorite for 
the red neos or the yellow neos for you? Which ones you like more? Uh, I like the I like the red neos. Pre first shed meal or post first shed meal? Uh, I, I pre pre first shed. Yay imports or boo imports? Boo imports. Wow, I'm just kidding. Um, what what if it came down to you importing any reptile though around the world? Let's just say the you know your zoo certified or whatever the fuck it could be anything. A dream reptile imported to your collection. What would that reptile be? Um, I would have to go Corallus, and then I'd have to go uh, Croponi. Was that the one that was just mentioned not too long ago on the other show, uh, Marshall, that Randy brought up? I think so, yeah. Really rare one? Like, it's like there's only... Yeah, there's like two of them in existence. Wow. Crazy. Um, okay. What about one reptile that you could think of that nobody should ever import? Maybe should have never been imported. Just leave it alone. Uh, I'm going to go uh, Nile Crocodile. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> to, spray, to spray or miss an Amazon tree boa or to never spray and miss an Amazon tree boa? Uh, spray and miss. Choice substrate for an Amazon tree boa? Paper towels. Wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> yay sports or boo sports? Yay sports. Favorite sport? Jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Hey, my guy. I like this guy. I did see a couple <laughs> of you. I saw a couple tourneys that you were maybe at. Was that you rolling or there for somebody? What was going on there? Oh yeah, I just went. I just came back from Las Vegas, uh, Masters Worlds. Dude, and you were you actually competed? I did not compete there this time. Man, I would man. like to. That is a goal of mine. Dude, epic! All right, well maybe we could geek out later about that. That's awesome. That's yeah, for sure. All right, awesome. Moving forward. All right, uh, big flexor or no flexor? I'm sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are we talking about? Muscles? Yeah. Flex is a loosely defined word nowadays. You just take it however you want it to be. Are you like? Do you like to kind of like you know show off a bit, or are you just not want to show off at all? That's kind of oh, what I mean. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, steak or fish? Steak. Yay alcohol or boo alcohol? Uh yeah, yeah, I enjoy it sometimes. Choice alcohol beverage. Like if you were just in the mood, what would it be? Tequila. Ooh, I like that. Kayla. Uh, huh. Favorite genre of music? Uh, um, rap? Nice. Uh, what, g- gangster rap? All right, perfect. West Coast, wow. rapper, West Coast rapper, East Coast rap? West Coast. Nice. Favorite West Coast rapper of all time? Um, probably, probably just had to go with Tupac. I'm very surprised. I'm happy right now. That's yeah. great. Dang, right. good job, man. I thought you were going to say fish like Marshall or some shit. I was going to... I don't I just had <laughs> what to... Is, what is fish? <laughs> Dude, they're laughing. This thing, they swim around. They have gills. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to lie. I get into fish every now and then. All right. Uh, little word association. First thing to come to mind, milk. Say it one more time. Little word association. Just say whatever comes to mind, okay? Milk. Cookies. Substrate. Paper towels. Stuck shed. Shit. FedEx shipping. Uh, I'm pissed that I have to pay for <laughs> fucking overnight delivery to arrive at a certain time. And then I have to pay for insurance to guarantee that it arrives at that time that it's supposed to arrive at. <laughs> okay. Ball python, ball python community. Huh? Ball python community. Uh, I mean, whatever. <laughs> uh, agnostic I, I don't really you know whatever all right end it go ahead marshall what's your what's your hot seat question uh you got to get rid of all the amazons tomorrow what are you going to replace them with wow oh i like that uh is it like a it's going to be a reptile whoa Whoa, maybe or or like maybe I, yeah, yes, it has to be. A, how about that? It has to be ha, has to be a reptile. Okay, okay. It, um, I I would go with like another uh, corral. Like I'd probably I I'd love to have some uh, basins. You know, like that'd be cool. Well, are you ready for that heartbreak? <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> Dave. Ending in style. Oh, uh, uh, condoms or no condoms? 
Oh my God. <laughs> I, <laughs> Child, obviously no, 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 no condom. <laughs> I'm married, so, you know, I, I'm married, so I say no condoms. But you know, like uh, if you're playing the field, I, I think you should probably strap it up. You know, yeah, I think you let it wing it either way, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Listen, thank, again, thank you so much. We just had shy of sixty people tapped in. So what do you have to say to everyone who enjoyed tonight's episode and just everyone really rocking with you out there, man? Ah, uh, I I hope you enjoy the content that I put out. You know, like uh, yeah. this was something that I, I'm pretty passionate about, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I enjoy doing podcasts. I love posting uh, photos. I'm not great on social media. Uh, I can be bad at conversations sometimes, but you know, mm-hmm. uh, I, yeah, I I put it out there so other people can enjoy it as much as I do. I know I enjoyed it, Dave. What do you got to say? Just one last thing, you know, that question came up earlier about, you know, what's going to make that species really peak? What's going to get it more popular in the hobby? The passion you bring to the table with it and honestly, the content. I mean, some people just don't realize what's happening with these. And when they realize what's happening, I think a lot more people would want to work with them. Yeah. Awesome. You know, I'm I'm happy to welcome other people, you know, like I, I like I like it. Yeah, I love hearing the passion, man. It definitely speaks volumes, and uh, just keep up the great work. Um, I'll definitely, like I said, be following a lot of your stuff, and, and uh, I'm sure a lot of other people will after hearing this as well. Uh, but, man, do me a favor, everyone, and please give it up for a man, Dayton of HD of Boils, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, have a good night, man. Thank you, Dayton. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Hey, Dayton. Thanks for having me. All right, Great man. Talking. What a time. Great episode. What do you guys think? That was fun. It was yeah, fun. Yeah, that was good. I mean, there's, you know, they, they, I don't want to say on the level of Condros as far as keepers being like that geeky, but it sounds like it. It sounds like the Amazon tree boat area is just as geeky as the Condros. Like it, it, it seems very. It is. It's, it's it's not as popular, and there's still like you know there's still a lot to 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 learn to be determined. I think you know. Yeah. As much as we as much as we know now, you know, uh, just the fact that, like, I think Dave was saying earlier, you know, you breed two wild types together and you get like, you know, a, a broad range of everything from, you know, red, yellow, Halloween phase, like understanding all that is uh, still um, still a lot of questions, I think. Yeah. What do you think, Dave? Um, yeah, I think he was spot on with that. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, I'll be honest, I don't even remember what the fuck you asked. Yeah, I'm just going to bullshit through it. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I, I blanked out for a second there, man. I thought we were done. I didn't think I had to do anything else up there. I thought it was over. Condom or no condoms, huh, Dave? What a question. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah syphilis will mess with your memory right here. We're going to let Dave go. We're going to let uh, Marshall go and then Dave. So, Marshall, real quick, before we let you go, enjoy the rest of your night. Uh, what do you have to say to all the people out here enjoying your presence and you being a part of the trap? What do you have to say to all your supporters out there, man? Thanks, man. Thanks for following. Thanks for the support. Uh, thanks for having me on this week. It was a lot of fun. Learned a lot. You know, I've been keeping Amazons for three, four, or five years now, and um, still really don't know too much about them. So it's been a good. Uh, it's been a good. It's been a good thing for me to hear Dayton and Randy, and you know, just about kind of everything that's uh, going on in Amazon world. Um, and I agree with Dave too, you know, the more you get that stuff out there and uh, the more people see what the, uh, what, what possibilities there are out there, I think they're just going to get more and more popular, you know, will they ever get to Chondro level? You know, I don't, I don't know, probably not. Uh, but they're going to be, uh, uh, I mean, they're cool snakes. Well, if you never fucking let so, in your Chondros, if you never let any of your Chondros go, Marshall, that could be a, that could be a possibility. Okay, buddy. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working right. on it. Same, man. You don't need all those condos you have. All right. Anymore. You have a lot. <laughs> you guys have hey, a good evening. Have a good night, Marshall. See you later, buddy. Thank you so much. See ya. Peace. I love that guy. Uh, you know, one thing I was going to say, though, um, I admire someone who has so many people, like a lot of people go to Marshall for advice when it comes to condos or a lot. But then if you see how like of a student Marshall is to the Amazon tree boas, but like is okay with saying it, like he's not like, well, you know, I've been doing this forever. No, he's like, dude, I still don't know a lot about this. And, you know, and, and it's cool to see for someone who's been in this for multiple generations, 
um, still here wanting to learn. You know, and you're, you're the same way too, Dave. This is why I see you get so excited about shit like this. You just love geeking out. You know what I mean? I do like geeking out a little bit. And honestly, I think that's all part of the hobby. I mean, you know, I say it. If you came into this hobby with a love of animals, then you got to be a geek for it. Um, and you also got to be obsessed. Um, but no, no, I thought it was a good conversation. And I really mean it. Like, um, yeah, I do a little stalking. I love all the pictures. I love what seeing what people are doing. But, um, you know, I never really had an understanding of how these genes worked. Like, you know, to see it and not understand what the combinations needed to be, you know, it kind of threw me off. I wasn't ready to invest. But, um I'm tempted now, man. I've been holding off for a long time. I think it's time. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, thank you for being a part of this tonight. What's your uh, what's your MO for next week? I mean, Arlington or not? Um, yeah, so you were talking about maybe going to Bill's house on Friday. And, you know, we got the Thursday night before. So um, you want to work something for Thursday and then we roll into uh, Marlington, do something on Friday. Or what do you want to do next week, bud? I didn't publicly say I was going to Bills, but now I did. So thanks. Oh yeah. shit! Well, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't realize you were on the. I didn't know, man. You didn't say it was like private information. I did you see my hands. Like, stop! What are you fucking doing? But it's all good. I was yeah. looking down. <laughs> Will you be there Friday? Is that possible? Because I, I, I gotta say, out of everyone I want to see at Bills, you're the guy I would really yeah. love to see at Bills. I'm, I'm gonna make time, and here's a little tip for you. When you edit this, why don't you just take this last little bit out, man? Just I don't edit it. Happen. Only Slide 60 ready. people know about Bill now. Nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. It's on, man. People know it's it's on and cracking next week, and I cannot wait. And I miss you, buddy. Cannot wait to give you a hug, spend some time with you. Um, But before we let you enjoy the rest of your night, what do you have to say to all your people out there, man? Everyone who loves seeing you be a part of any reptile content. What do you have to say to all your fans out there, man? Um, you know, I appreciate it. You know, I really mean it. Um, you know, when I was at Salt Lake City this past week, a lot of people came over to talk to us about what we had been doing, uh, talk to me about the podcast, and um, – you know, like I said, I, I appreciate it. You know, anybody who likes listening to this, you know, always come by and talk to me. I, I want to talk reptiles. Yeah, man. And, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to continue it on and uh, can't wait to have you on the next one. But uh, guys, do me a favor, please. If you see Dave at Arlington, go give this guy a lot of props for me because he deserves it. But more importantly, give it up for my boy, my dog, David Levinson, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> see you next Thank week. You, buddy. Later, bud. That's my guy right there. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate the show. Um, are you being here for this and uh, getting this Amazon tree boa content going for the trap? I think it's uh, historical. Okay. I want to say uh, don't forget to uh, hit the like button before you head out. Uh, got a super chat. I do want to answer. I just wanted to wait politely before I answer it. I won't be an animal con. I, uh, you know, I've been saying this for a little bit. And uh, yeah, I won't be able to make it this year, unfortunately. Uh, but I do have some good friends that are going to be there. So make sure you check it out. Animal Con USA. Um, shout out to anyone out there who's going to be there this uh, weekend. And uh, yeah, have a good time for me. I'll be there next next year for sure. Uh, God damn you, Warren. All right, guys. <laughs> Again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for uh, spending your night here with me and uh, getting to know Dayton and hanging out with my boys, Marshall and uh Dave Levison. Now, if you're looking for exclusive content, go down to the very first link you see in the description below. Click on it. Join the Trap Talk Patreon family. Collect, um, connect with over 170 trappers, people who are really bit passionate about what they do. Um, no bottom feeders. I can tell you that much, man. Everyone literally has a goal, and we are on our way with doing this shit. So I got to say thank you to all my trappers out there. You guys are my heart. I love you. And, man, hit that subscribe button. If you really enjoyed tonight's episode, smash that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell, and you will not be slept on. Also, don't sleep on my vlog tomorrow, 6.45 a.m. That's how we start the weekend, family. How do you start the weekend? The trap vlogs every single Friday. Come see what's happening within my own collection, okay? A lot of you motherfuckers forget. I'm an animal keeper before a podcaster. Don't get it twisted. And I prove it. How many people run a big game talking a bunch of shit, but they don't back it up with their animals? Holy fuck. I know I talk shit, but guess what, motherfucker? I back it all up. I back it all up. So be there tomorrow, 6.45 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Set your reminder, the trap vlogs. See what's cracking. And then we just have more stuff to look forward to on this channel. Are you kidding me? Monday's new Breed on the Block series, Texas. Texas is going to be coming super heavy and respectable next week okay I'm telling you right now this right here proves it the reptile perch at the trap monday new breed on the block series my man david brahms okay coming to the trap we're going to be talking about his chondro projects but more importantly 
his perch designs. He has amazing perches for your arboreal snakes. Every single one of my Focus Cube habitats has a David Brahms perch. Couple of them. Very easy to pull out. We're going to break all that down Monday with my man, David. Okay. So I do want to say shout out to all my Texans. Just be ready. All right. Because it's it's no joke. I don't even want to tell you the podcast we're having next Thursday night. But before we even get to next Thursday night after David Brahms, we are back to the Tree Monitor Tuesday segments. And we got my man, Brandon Van Aston of Canadian Cold Blood, co-hosting with me, my man, Brian Susan. So be ready for this, man. This is going to be great. As you guys know, a lot of you guys know who fuck with me know that I am a tree monitor fucking. I'm just all I'm obsessed with it right now. And I can't wait to sit down with two of the best uh, next Tuesday, six o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Guys, enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you so much. I got things I got to do, and I'm sure you guys, too. But I'll see you guys all at the top. and I'll catch you guys next time. And I'm out.